Hello, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to ditch your front mech and fit a narrow wide chambering. Essentially what we'll be doing is removing a whole pile of weight and stuff off your bike that you're probably just going to end up throwing on eBay. You've got your front shifter, your cable, your front mech, both your chain rings, which you're obviously going to replace with a single narrow wide ring, a few links to your chain, and so you're going to save a heap of weight, your bike's going to get a lot quieter, and you're probably never going to miss those gears. You will need a soft face mallet, cable cutters, a tool to hold the female part of the chainring bolt, a flat bladed screwdriver, tool for the preload cap on a Shimano crank, if that's what you're removing, narrow wide ring, shorter single ring specific chain ring bolts, a chain tool, allen keys, torx keys and a torque wrench. First of all we're going to break our chain so we can remove it from the front mech. Some front mechs will have a screw here that you can undo and slightly lever the cage apart so the chain can be squeezed out of it but we're going to end up shortening the chain anyway this bike's currently running a double and the larger of the two chain rings is a 38 we're fitting a 32 so we're going to be able to lose some chain if your chain is joined with a pin you're going to need a chain tool if you have a quick release link which is generally the favorable option then it's simply a case of squeezing the two parts together and pulling them apart like so. Now you can remove the chain from the chain rings and the front derailleur. Next up, we're gonna remove this front mech. So we're gonna cut the crimp off the end of the cable, undo the cable clamp, and pull the cable free. Next up, we're going to move to the bars and remove the grip, the brake lever, and ditch that shifter. This job's made much easier if you've got lock-on style grips. Just undo the collars, or collar, depending on the style of grip. That should just pull free. To remove your brake lever, choose the correct Allen key. In this case, we've got a formula brake. This is a 4mm Allen key and slacken the clamp sufficiently for us to remove it from the end of the bar. Same is true of the shifter. If you haven't got enough slack, you may need to turn the bars or possibly loosen them in the, in the stem clamp. There we go, cable, bit of a chunk of weight there, you won't be riding around with anymore. Next, we can refit the lever. So slide it back onto the bars. Take your grip. Fit that into position. And tighten the collars. Don't over tighten them, because they're easy to strip. Just make sure your grip isn't going to rotate. Next, we're going to set that angle of your brake lever and also its distance from the grip. We want this to match the one on the other side. And we're just going to nip these bolts up. Never over tighten them. They only need to be tight enough so that the lever or shifter doesn't move when you're using them. You really want them to be loose enough so if they do take a knock, they'll move around the bar rather than snapping or bending or causing other damage. Next up, we're gonna kiss goodbye to our front mech. These are mounted in various ways. This is the older traditional band-on style. Some will bolt directly to your frame. But either way, it should be pretty clear that there's a mounting bolt. Undo that. Remove it from the frame and try flogging it to someone. Best of luck. In order to make it easier to fit our new chain ring, we're going to remove the chain set. In this case, it's a Shimano chain set, external bearings. So 
We've got our pinch bolts on the non-drive side. Slacken those a little bit at a time. Don't be tempted to undo one all the way. Once they're nice and loose, we're going to remove the preload cap on the end. Should only be finger tight. Put the cap in a safe place. Unless you've got a very old crank, then in between the clamp, there'll be a plastic safety tab. Just flip that up with your small screwdriver and you'll be able to remove the non-drive side crank arm. To remove the drive side, give the axle a tap with a soft face mallet. It should wiggle free. If it's a bit stubborn, you can give it a gentle tap Careful not to hit the chain rings because you'll probably bend them. We're now ready to remove our old chain rings. In the case of this XT chain set, you're going to need a T30 Torx key. It can be pretty tight. Make sure the tool's well engaged in the head of the bolt. the granny ring removed. Moving on to the larger ring, or larger rings if you're on a triple, you may find that you need a tool such as this. This is a part tool CNW2 tool. Something similar to this will hold the female part of the chain ring bolts in place as you undo them. Sometimes they'll just come undone, no worries. Other times I'll spin, so you may or may not need that. Those have all come undone quite easily. Just hold the female part with your finger. They spin off as easily as those did. With a double like this, you should be able to reuse your chain ring bolts for your single ring. If you're running a triple, then obviously you'll have two rings in this position and you'll probably find that your bolts are too long and you either need washers to pad them out to make up for the ring that you've removed or the cleaner, better looking option is to go for some single ring specific chain ring bolts which are shorter. So that is those bolts and the chain ring removed. Makes sense whilst you've got the opportunity to give the crank a good clean up. You don't often get to get up close and personal with this part of your bike, so get rid of all the grime that's around there before you fit your new ring. This gamut ring has recesses on the back for the female side of the bolt. And then the male side just screws in like so. The threads on these have been treated with Loctite, so just put a drop of Loctite 242 onto the threads. That'll help stop them from vibrating loose. Just out of interest, if you are fitting an oval ring, for instance, then you will need to make sure that the ring is clocked correctly, i.e it's turned the right way around in relation to the crank arm. You should get instructions with your oval, oval ring if that is what you are fitting. And that's the chain set, or right hand crank arm, with your new narrow wide ring fitted. Now we're going to refit our chain set with our new ring. So take the drive side crank arm, pass the axle through the BB, and we're just going to tap it through. Make sure that the axle has got a light coating of grease. Now we're fitting the non-drive side crank arm. This just fits over the axle. There's only one way to fit it, because it has a, a splined fitting, which means you can only put it in the right place. Take the preload cap and just nip that up. Best way I find of adjusting the preload 
on your Shimano BB such as this is to tighten this collar about as tight as you can with your fingers and then back it off and then just nip it up. You don't want that to be tight at all because it will put excessive preload on your bearings and they'll wear out quicker and you'll go slower. With the preload set, I'm just going to push this safety tab down into place and then we're going to tighten the pinch bolts. Recommend using a torque wrench here. Torque setting is 13 to 15 newton meters and the bolts need to be evenly tightened. So just nip them up in turn bit by bit. If you only tighten one, chances are you'll strip them. Make sure the Allen key bit is all the way into the head of the bolt because they're quite easy to round out. Final thing that we need to do is to shorten the chain if we fitted a smaller chain ring. When you fit your chain onto a new chain ring, make sure that the wide part of the chain goes over one of the wide teeth. And in order to set our chain length, what we're gonna do is we're gonna position the chain in first gear. So we've got the biggest sprocket at the back and we're gonna pull the chain tight so the rear derailleur, the cage that you see moving there, is at full stretch. And we're going to see how many links we can get away with removing. Looks as though we can remove one whole link. We've dropped from a 38 to a 32. So as we're using a quick release chain link, we need to remove a link so we have male ends at either end of the chain for the link to attach to. Position your chain in the chain tool. Make sure everything's nice and lined up. And drive the pin all the way through. To make it easier to join, we're just going to take the chain off the chain ring. That should give us enough slack to join the chain. It's also worth noting, you'll you need to turn the clutch off your Shimano mech. If you've got a SRAM mech, then what you need to do is pull the cage forward and there's a button to press in, which will hold it in place. That'll make it much easier to join your chain. If you have a 10 speed, or an 11 speed SRAM set up, then this link will be very tight. They also recommend that they're, that they're not reused in order to connect them. Once you've got them together loosely, you'd need to position that link on the top run of chain and have a hack at the, the pedals to join that link together. With everything fitted, we're just going to run through our gears, make sure that everything's set up correctly. And we're also going to check our chain line, make sure that we've got a nice straight chain when we're as near as we can be in the middle of the, middle of the cassette. So that needs to be running nice and straight. Otherwise, we're going to run into trouble when we're at one of the extremes on the cassette. So this is all fitted nicely, all working as it should. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Out of interest, we thought we'd see how much all this junk we've removed actually weighs. And that is reading 443 grams, so not a million miles off half a kilo. Not bad, eh?